Hey everybody, it's another Majestic INFJ. Happy Memorial Day to all of you. Um, and hopefully all of you INFJs out there are avoiding working the grill or doing anything like that. That's like the classic TE, uh, polar TE issue for, for me at least. I have no idea what to do when it comes to grilling or even starting it up or anything. Um, Okay, so speaking of, um, I think what, what I wanted to talk about today was actually something um, that uh, has to do with the polar function for INFJs, speaking of the uh, staying away from the, from the grill today. Um, so this was from a typing video from thinking, uh, talking with famous people. Um, and for those of you who might not be familiar with the channel, there's it, it's another YouTube channel um, with a guy, Eric, who will do typing videos, among a lot of other types of videos that often are really hilarious. So I encourage you to watch what you can. Um, but he'll do uh, MBTI cognitive functions type testing. Um, and as I've mentioned on other videos here before, I really like his approach because what he tries to do is, is, uh, hone in on each of the persons, each of the people that he's typing and figure out what their polar function is. Right. Be and, and for those of you who might not know the polar function, it's P O L R stands for point of least resistance. I always say path of least resistance, but I think it's really point of least resistance, which is effectively of all of your eight cognitive functions. Um, it's the one that is, you know, really in your blind spot or the one that you have, you have the hardest time sort of focusing your attention on. Um, and that, and that would be the function that's going to be in your seventh slot. So if you think of whatever's in your third slot or your third function, so for example, if you're an INFJ, your third function is going to be introverted thinking. Your seventh slot is going to be the opposite of that. So extroverted thinking. Um, if you're an ENFJ, uh, your third function is going to be... Um, extroverted sensing um, and so therefore your s seventh function or your polar function is going to be introverted sensing. So what I'm going to do, first what I want to do is just sort of talk about what came up in this video um, on think talking with famous people in the typing session and show an example or I'm going to provide a link to a clip from the video but it provides an example of what I call domain shifting when you have to deal with your polar function. So when you're presented with a task where you have to use whatever your polar function is, my argument is you tend to shift to whatever your second function is or your tool function. So you try to take it out of the domain that deals that your polar function the domain of your polar function and you shift it <clears throat> into the domain of your second function or your tool function. So let me give you the example that I, I, I give all the time is if you're driving, if you're an INFJ and your polar function is extroverted thinking and you're driving down the car, driving your car down the road and your tire goes flat, um, and you're all by yourself and you, you have to change your tire. You know, what do you do? Um, and now this is a TE type task, right? It's dealing with the with some sort of object. Um, there's an ordinal process to it. It's external to you. You've got to sort of go from step one to step two to step three to change your tire, right? And if you're TE polar, that's all just sort of, you know, uh, you know, a fuzzy mess to you, you know, where do you start? What do you do next? Um, how do I get from point A to point B to point C to point D? And yes, you know, 
even if you're TE polar, you can figure it out. But the point is, is that it takes a lot of attention. It takes a lot of attentional resource. Um, if you're polar in that function to sort of, you know, keep your attention focused on the task at hand and, um, you know, get to your goal. So what I'd argue is if you're TE polar in that situation, your immediate reaction is not, okay, how do I figure out how to fix this tire? Which somebody with dominant TE or strong TE is probably going to do. Instead, you're going to do what I call domain shifting, and you're going to try to shift this problem from a TE problem to an FE problem, because FE is the INFJ. FE is going to be your second function or your tool function. And so instead of trying to think through the necessary steps to change your tire, you're going to try to make this into more of a social domain problem. And in other words, who can I call to help me with this, right? So either somebody that I could call that's going to, you know, come out and help me change the tire themselves or um, somebody who, you know, I can get on the phone and they'll just sort of talk me through it. Like, what am I supposed to do here? Where, where do I start? Um, what tools do I need? How do I use these tools? All that kind of stuff. Um, you might call somebody to walk you through and then maybe your last option might be, okay, I'm going to have to watch a YouTube video here. <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to at least see where do I start? What tools do I need? All that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, you know, I mean, if your phone's completely dead and you have no contact to the outside world, then yeah, you know, if you focus on it hard enough, even if you're TE polar, you're going to be able to figure it out. So I'm not trying to say that this is a total, you know, missing function or anything like that. But, you know, we only have so many re resources that we can use um, and so much energy, mental energy. And so our natural inclination is to try to shift it into something that takes less mental en energy for us. Because if you're an INFJ, it's going to be a lot easier to convince somebody to come out and help you than to do it yourself, <laughs> right? Um, and if you're an INTJ or an ISTJ or an ESTJ or ENTJ where TE is pretty strong, it's going to be the opposite. You know, it, it'll probably be a lot easier for you to just do it yourself rather than trying to find somebody to help you, right? Um, and not only that, but like, you know, people with strong TE tend to, you know, they, they have a sort of a pride in exercising their TE. So they see this as a challenge, like, you know, all right, um, going to go change that tire. Um, and they'll certainly let you know about it after they did it. Um, so they could get their gold stars, their TE gold stars. Um, okay. So in the video, um, clip that I've, I, I've linked below and I, you know, it's just sort of 60 seconds out of the, the, the typing session. I recommend you watch the whole thing. But the interesting thing was, so the host, Eric, was, was actually really having a hard time typing her um, because she didn't really come across as TE polar. Um, and, and, and I, I agree with that. Like she, had some TE polar responses that seemed, you know, pretty good. Um, not as strong as, you know, somebody would dominate TE, but she didn't come across as being TE polar. And so he was sort of, you know, going between, you know, is this person maybe an INTJ? Are they an INFJ? Um, she certainly seemed, you know, introverted. Intuition was in her conscious front stack. Um, so then it was just sort of a matter of where, you know, where's the FE and the TE, that kind of thing. So in this clip though, he asks her, you know, what, what would you do, if, you know, if, um, you know, you had to fix a, a, a doorknob in your house or you had to fix a towel rack that came down again, a very TE oriented type of, um, task where, you know, you got to fix some sort of object and there's sort of an ordinal process to it. Um, and her immediate reaction was, I would call my mom. You know, she's like, you know, every time I have a situation like that, I just ask my mom, you know, to help me. Um, 
And so, and you see this a lot in other videos where somebody is probably TE polar. And even when um, he did a typing session with me, um, that was sort of my immediate reaction as well. I'm going to have to watch a YouTube video or ask somebody how to do this when he gave me a TE task. And so I thought that was a pretty interesting um, phenomenon or pretty interesting, you know, response from her. Um, it jibes with the idea of this domain shifting and to me, I think that sort of squarely puts her in the INFJ camp. I, I could see arguments going either way, but that particular response seemed to me to go into the INFJ camp. And even with some of her other TE questions that he gave her sort of earlier in the session, her immediate, so he asked her something like, you know, if you had to solve, you know, the, the world's problem of all the plastics in the ocean, like her immediate reaction was, okay, well, I'm going to put together a team of people, a team of experts, and we're going to figure it out, you know. And he had to sort of, you know, keep nudging her to like, you know, okay, well, what if like you have to do it and you can't get anybody else to help you? Um, then there's a sort of a, a breakdown of, well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, and I would, and I'm sure I would respond the same way. Um, okay. So again, that's just a, a nice example of domain shifting when you're given a, when you're TE polar and you're given a TE problem or, you know, goal um, task to do, your immediate reaction is going to try to shift it into an FE domain. Who can I get to help me? Um, you know, and, and so instead of it being a TE task centered in the physical object oriented world, now it's a FE task centered in the social domain where you're trying to navigate social dynamics to achieve the same goal. You're still trying to get your tire changed, but you're, you know, going in a completely different route. Um, okay. And what I think I'm going to do is do a series of videos here um, talking about the different polar, fu the different functions and when they're polar and what you would expect to see if somebody's got a particular polar function, what kind of domain shifting you might expect to, to see from them. Um, and I've got a few examples, but I'm gonna try to break it down into different videos rather than making just one long video covering it, all the different types. So watch for that. Um, and thanks for watching this. Let me know if you have any questions or comments um, on this video. And then I'll, I'll most likely be uploading videos for the other functions. So for those of you who are either dealing with other types of people and sort of want to think that through, or if you are a different type, you know, what sort of domain shifting might you be engaging in? Um, okay. So look forward to doing that and I will see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.